Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw that or not. It was sneaking. Sneaking by so I could get my copy. Sneaking. Uh, it, was, it was rather dainty, too. Yeah, well, I was trying to sneak by, you know. And Bill, I want us to notice, uh, let me go ahead and read uh, three and four. Sure this thing, Bob. This is Jude, and good morning to you folks out there in video land. Uh, this is August the 8th. Bill, uh, God has blessed us with some nice weather so far. Yeah, it's been a little muggy out okay. there. It's been muggy, but it's not been 103 muggy. <coughs> no, it, uh, I mean, I don't remember my lawn being this green in the middle of August. It's just nice, yeah. So anyway, we're, we're continuing our studies here, and we're in Jude today, right before Revelation. It's one, uh, one book, a couple pages in my Bible, 25 verses long. And uh, let me read three, and this was his intent. This was his writing, this letter, uh, the intent of the letter, but we're going to see how it changed. Uh, two says, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, keep that word in mind, beloved, or loved ones, friends, loved friends, good friends, two says, uh, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, this was, that was his intent for this letter, for this epistle, uh -huh. it was needful for me to write unto you. I always, uh, um, the, you know, I sat down, and this was my intent to write to the brethren, to the fellow believers. This is who he's addressing there. We're going to go over that, too. Of our common salvation that we have, if you're here locally with me, or if you're out there somewhere, over there somewhere, this is, this is the intent of this epistle. But the Holy Spirit got a hold of me and said this. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you, that you should earnestly contend for the faith, defend it, stand, stand up for what is right, mm -hmm. which was once delivered unto the saints for uh, your safekeeping, defend it. Uh, to for, defend the faith. To defend the faith, right. Yeah. Verse 4 says, For there are certain men crept in unawares. They came in the side door of the bill. They slithered in. Slithered in. Yep. Who were before of old ordained to this <laughs> condemnation, okay, written beforehand. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, wantonness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So wow, what a what a bunch of opening there in, in those first four verses. Right off, right off, Bill, I want us to take that word preserved in verse one. Uh -huh. And we'll get to the we'll get to who this is writing this, who he's writing to about the timeline and everything else. But it's so very important to read that that those first four word, verses, about sixty five is the year. And yep. in verse one it says preserved. That is talking about to who he is addressing, the brethren, the fellow believers, those that are called out and loved by God. Yeah, I was looking at my, my uh, vital statistics here, and it says the original audience were Jewish Christians. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. These converts that have heard the gospel. Right. That have heard the gospel. <coughs> the Lord has turned their light on. They are the beloved now. They, they, they are, and he's going to use them as an example. They, they're right, their right, predecessors right, as right. an example here pretty soon, because he's going to talk about six different, uh, three different entities, and then, and then three different individuals uh, about the apostates that's going on. Yeah. That, that, that's what the Holy Spirit turned his mind and his spirit and his, his hand about writing to. But notice that word preserved in verse 1. And then we're going to compare that to verse 6 where it says reserved. And then in verse 13 where it says reserved. So right now, folks, right off the bat for the first few minutes, and we probably will not get... Uh, well, here are my notes. Here, here are the first eleven verses, and, and then there's uh, that many more to go. Hey Sam, uh, yes. I like to interrupt you for a second so I can perform a audio check, and then we can stop this again. You know that might be a good idea. I think so. 
Let me just stop it and then we'll well just patch it in. We bees back. We it works. Back. It's right. good. So it no good no sound. no 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 audio. No, <laughs> no, audio. no audio. Difficulties. <laughs> well good. Uh so well, thank you again. And uh also I have several I wrote me a list bill of uh of little corrections that I needed to go over. Let me do that right quick too. Previous so studies? Of uh, what? A previous study? Yes, a previous study. Uh, not last week. I was not. I was in bed uh, moaning and groaning last week with this nasties yeah. going on. Anyway, um, the Lord is, is healing me from that, so thank you, Lord, for that. And the I noticed when I watch, when I rewatch, and I try to watch most of these just to see what I've done. Uh, for instance, uh, when I said the shortest verse, I think I re re referenced that to be in Matthew. It's not Matthew, it's John chapter 11. Jesus right. wept. Right. Uh, you know, all the Gospels have so many of like sayings, but that one, particular one, is in, is yeah. in John. So it's mm -hmm. not Matthew, it's John. Then there was another one. I think I fixed the one about Jeremiah. I had the, the right numbers, but the wrong. Right, you fixed uh, that fixed one already that. last week, last time we did uh, it. And then something else, I don't know, it may come to me. I had a list, but I forgot about it. Uh, my mind has not been really 100% this past week. Had double ear infection, sinus infection, yeah. uh, back out of whack. So, but when you said Matthew mm -hmm. for Jesus wept, did I go back and re-verify that it was John? No. No, I didn't. I think we just left it there. Oh, okay. But it, it's John. I'm sure okay. it's John 11. If I can think of it right. All right, boss. Let me make sure. It bugs me when I lose stuff. Well, I know, I know, you know it's, it's in John. The Bible, but I know it's know John. It. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you, you've all heard it. Uh, there's eleven. John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept. Right. Yeah. And what we were we were talking about in the previous day, two weeks ago, was uh, about Jesus um, standing, uh, looking out over Jerusalem, back over in Isaiah, Isaiah yeah. twenty two, right, right. about the not forgiving these uh, these yeah. part, unpardonable sins. That they've done because they won't be forgiven until them until they die. Uh, anyway, flip forward into the Gospels. Jesus wept. Same city, same condition. They're so right. full of idolatry and rebellion well, and everything else. We also have to take into consideration that at that time Jesus was a man, mm -hmm. and he had to have been frustrated. Absolutely. You, you know what I'm saying? He is man. so frustrated. He's just my. Absolutely. How many times have you sat down and and just thinking about something that's so wrong? That you can make it right, and you just say, and you just cry. Yeah. Right, right. This moment's not the time. So right, it's coming. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, he wept. He, yeah. he, uh, I asked, I asked Connie that not too long ago. We live in Cumbie, and I and I asked on the way back. It was, I think, it was from uh, from, from church. One Sunday, I believe. I'm not sure. Might have been. We might have been had studied over that. But. Uh, there's a 777 people that's on the population sign, and and I got to thinking how how often uh, last week was there the first of this month we've been there 16 years got the bucket house 16 years ago, and I asked myself and then I asked her too how how many times have we stopped at our little city's sign and got down on our knees with our Bible in our hand and wept over our city. God save company. God turn the lights on these people. You know, yeah. I, we don't do that. No. We don't do it. No, we people don't, don't really think about that. But here's, here's the Son of God Saying looking he, over yeah. his city, and you can see it around. Yeah. Uh, well, I can see it back there on that wall. Uh, weeping, crying, yeah. tears. Yeah. Of they're, they're not saved. They're would, not saved. would that be the only verse in the Bible that actually shows Jesus had an emotion? Oh no, there's more. There's more. Yeah, there's more. Okay. Yeah. I thought I'd just throw that yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah, there's more. Uh, yeah. Hate. Well, I'm not talking about hating everybody and killing everybody. I'm talking. Oh about no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's later. That's later. <laughs> we'll, we'll start Revelations uh, six here for you. No, that's later. Uh, no, but no, in 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 multiple instances in the uh, uh, look at John chapter eight. My goodness, if you want to read John chapter eight, it's all it's red letter, yeah. bright red letters, and he is scolding the. Uh, Religious, churchy people yeah, there, you know. Yeah. And he, talk, he tell you, he looks right at him, and says, "You're your father, the devil." Uh, when he goes into the to the temple area, the proper and general area, and then in onto the temple, he yeah. sees 
that it's been made into a, a house of merchandise. And oh yeah, I forgot told. about yeah. that. He yeah. overturned the tables, Table, he sure got did. mad at him, he looked right in their little beady eyes and said, you've made my father's house, which is set up from the beginning to be a house of prayer. You've turned yeah. it into a house, oh yeah. He, got he could have gone, all gone. <laughs> yeah, he could have just ended up, blink, you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I had forgot about that, yes yeah, sir. Oh yeah, he had, uh, and, and just think, um, think how, and I know we're getting off a little bit, but we're going to be going to Luke in our next, mm -hmm. in the next study, so this yep. is going to lead to it in the Gospels. Uh, how do you think, and I, I don't like using this phrase, how he felt or how I felt. I don't like using that, that terminology, but you know what I mean. Sure. Uh, how, what do you think was going through his, his oh, mind and his goodness. emotions? Say, let's say when Judas came up and kissed him in the garden, he knew what he was doing. He wasn't kissing him because he loved him. He was identifying him to the authorities to right. come and take him away right. to the whipping room, right. so to be arrested, to, to go through all that right. uh, uh, kangaroo court, as we call it. How, how do you think that might, hey, and, uh, Judas had been with him. You know, how, how, how would you feel? Hey, this is one of my 12, but but my father's already told me that this was gonna happen. Correct, but then, I mean, it, like was, said, it was all part of the greatest plan, the bigger plan, but, but you're right, though. But he was still man. I bet he was. That. And not only that, but when he was in the garden, he also, was praying to the Lord that he could do this another way, and then he then he went on ahead. Uh, there was Peter, and you know Peter, yeah. oh, the stone, the, the rock, yeah, Peter, yeah. And, and you know he tells him oh, stay here and pray. He comes back and finds him asleep. Sleep three times. Hey, hey, bonehead! Didn't I tell you just can't you can't you pray for for one hour? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He got frustrated. He, he sure did. You know, you bring out Jesus here. You're folks. bringing out a lot of good points here. You know. Well, um, what about? Oh, Mike, well, we can go on. Yes, we can. But we, we, we should make a list of that, shouldn't we? <laughs> you know? Well, here's the gist of it, I think, Bill. Yes, well, sir. Maybe why you asked that. It's because folks today, listen, listen to this. We have a Savior who has dealt with everything that we go through. Every emotion. Yeah. Every, every thought. Um, every letdown. Every joy. Every happiness. Every, everything. That we go through here on this earth, mm -hmm. Jesus went through. It was already it was already foretold that if you want to read uh, Isaiah 53, uh, you know uh, uh, everything that we have gone through, it, it was put on Him uh, to the cross, and it pleased His Father to see Him on the cross because that was our way to Him. Mm -hmm. There's that love we can talk about, right? But yes, uh, we, we might do that one of these days as a study. Uh, Jesus's quote unquote feelings. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what? There's that old saying, WWJD, what would Jesus do? We, we <laughs> can say, uh, how did Jesus feel? Yeah, something like that. And, and put, a, put a circumstance out there. That would be a good example. He was our perfect example. So yeah, He was. He was that. perfect. We might do that. Everything that he did. He, he, he even said, you can get angry, just don't sin. Amen. He got angry and didn't sin. No. I, I, I do wish, if there was one account, Bill, if there was one account that I could see, have it on video. I would like to have seen him going into the temple area there with all those oh, money chairs there. Oh yeah. And just walking. Now you gotta remember this was Jesus the little carpenter from Nazareth. I mean yeah. he wasn't Hercules. He was Je you know, he walked in uh, you know, pulled his robe back probably and put him over the side, just started to turn them tables over. But, I mean you were talking about birds flying, cages opening, coins going everywhere. You know? Well, that was instant anger right there. He was yeah. he got rather frustrated. Yes, sir, he did. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. That would have been a good thing to well, watch from the outside. I, I think that would be <laughs> rather interesting. Yes, it would have been. Would we have been in the audience going, go Jesus, go Jesus, or would we be going, oh, he's fixing to get arrested, then so am I. Well, you don't know. Mm. No. Now, folks, see what happens. And we're not talking about a small place here. Yeah. Oh, we're talking about the temple. About I'm, the looking, temp I'm, I'm looking at some of it over and it's a wall. It's a big, 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 big we're, area. Yeah, we're talking about a large area here. You know, that's Paul's recorded sermons where he walked around Athens and stuff like that. We're talking about Jerusalem is a rather large city. Yeah, and the temple was no small building. It was big. It was a compound and everything in there. Well, we know there was stones stacked upon stones because he said in Matthew 24 and 25 that, that one of these days here pretty soon, uh, not one of these stones will be left on another. Amen. We need to get back on track. All right, Bill. Okay. Zip it, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just kidding. No. We need, we need a lot of this stuff. This is good. This is Bible study. Amen. I, th I think of something I just throw it out there. Because yeah. who? I, I got the great teacher in front of me. Oh. 
That's you. Nor have I ever drank coffee from a straw, but this is pretty good here. <laughs> well, that's why I got all the yeah. different coffee. I got the coffee because I know how strong that stuff can be. That's pretty stout. Yeah. I feel my, my beard growing right now. There you go. So, uh, but we, we were bringing about the difference, and there's going to be, folks, there's going to be the first four verses of this. Uh, read, read yours. I love yours. I, I, I studied yours. I, I, know, I know the words in there too. Go ahead and read yours in the Messianic Jewish. But I want, I want to bring about the opening of this, and then we're going to get to the doom of the false teachers. You want me to start at verse one? Yeah, Jude, Jude uh, one through four. Okay. This letter is from Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ, and a brother of James. I am writing to all who have been called by God, the Father, who loves you and keeps you safe and the care of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more mercy, peace, and love. Verse 3 says, Dear friends, I had been eagerly planning to write to you about, this, about the salvation we all share, but now I find that I must write about something else, urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all time to his holy people. And four, I say this because some ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches, saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago, for they have denied our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -mm -mm. Now, look how, and here's that word, prevalent, bill that had that, that already is mm -hmm. in 65 in right. the year 65 right. we're talking about just 30 some odd years 30 to 35 years after christ jesus's uh, crucifixion right uh, who his fulfillment of god's redemptive plan him on the cross the world saw him on the cross he went to the sepulcher he arose from the from the grave from the dead walked out bodily and people saw him <laughs> Hundreds of people saw him, and then they saw him ascend to heaven. It, it, with just a few years later, three decades later, look what's happening already in the churches, not out in the honky tonks world. In the churches, these people have already gotten in, and they start <laughs> denying the Lord Jesus Christ. They start denying who he was, that he came in the flesh, that he was deity, everything else. This is what's happened. And notice, notice how it says they wormed their way in. They came in the side, they yeah. slithered in. Yeah. They come in, and I, and I wrote it. Uh, I wrote like this: They come in with these churchy smiles on, not showing their teeth, because if they show their teeth, they would be they, they would have fangs. <laughs> this is what's happening. Now, let me read you what what a good old boy wrote. His name is Kenneth Wust, W U E S T, and I hope I am saying that right. He was at the Bible uh, Moody Bible Institute. Took it actually from the Greek, the the actual to those who by God the Father have been loved and are right now being the permanent objects of his love and for Jesus the Christ have been guarded and are permanently and carefully watched to those who are called ones. This is a greeting and how wonderful that is. These people to, at this time and you and me today and we can relay this to today like you said, the introduction mostly to the Jewish community there at that time, the believing, the Messianic Jewish community. But Romans 11 allows us to be grafted in. Amen. So here we are today studying about this same Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. Preserved, <clears throat> Bill. We are preserved. We are being kept under his guard, in his hands. We're in his hands and no one can pluck us out. Right. Uh, we, are, we have been given into the Lord Jesus Christ's hands by God the Father. He has turned our lights on. We believe in him, so we're preserved. In fact, you just brought me some some Smucker's strawberry preserves. I love it. I eat that stuff by the by the jarful by the jarful. <laughs> and he brought me another one. He, he knows I love it. I'm, I may be addicted. I don't know. Anyway, that's preserved. Those are preserves. Anyway, they're, they're in that jar, and nothing can take them out of that jar. They're preserved. They're they're in there. They're sealed. There. And and if something tries to, what would happen? There would be a little warning. It, would go off. Well, that, that's what right. that you can't get into right. God's hands. You can't get into the Trinity's hands and take one of His out. Right. We'll preserve. Now, why I'm saying that is because 
when we get to the, if we get to five through 11 <laughs> or, or 13, we're gonna read about some that are reserved and it's a completely different thing. It's the same thing in the Greek uh, dictionary definitions, but there are two sets of definitions. We are preserved because, let me see how I wrote it. I wrote it somewhere about. Uh, also tell us why you're, why you're doing your research there. When you think about today's Christian, that yeah. to have the faith that a Christian today has is really, I don't want to say amazing, but it's pretty cool because we never witnessed none of this. Stuff. Right. Not and face, I, not face to face. Not face to face. Yeah. We witness it through the Word of God. But just for us to, to believe the Word of God, to have faith in faith. God, mm -hmm. and, and know about His mercy and His graces, in today's world mm -hmm. is, to me, uh, a heck of a challenge. Well, so just, think of that, just think of how marvelous His grace is on us. Amen. Think how more uh, dominant God's grace is on an individual's lives when he turns their life on out of this dark world today. Amen. Uh, because the, the blood of the uh, cross is not faded. It is not no. diminished. It's not no. lost any of its no. power. No. It, it's still atoning. He's still saving souls today, uh, which just gives even much more glory and credit and honor and glory to his name for being able to do that. Right. And, and, and it's his choice. But I did write the, and I was going to say this till next lesson, but I want to go ahead and do it, and then we'll do it again. But notice the, res the, the, the difference. Reserved. Reserved. Keeping the eye upon. In a fortress. Um, you're, we are, um, it's a loss of energy. I, I, well, I said uh, keep it out. That's reserved. I said them backwards. Preserved. For you and me today, Bill, the, the beloved from loss or injury. How about that? won't lose any of us and we won't be injured unto the point of the second death. Right. Okay. To save his offshoot, race or clan. Those are the preserved. And Jude, and if you want to read uh, Mark's gospel uh, about who this man is, uh, um, Mark 6, 3 and Acts 1, 13, it talks about his family. It introduced him to the, the brother of James, which would be Apparently the half-brother of Jesus also. I was thinking the same thing. If you want to get greedy, that's what mm -hmm. it says. Mm -hmm. Judas, in the Messianic Jewish Bible, which gets even clearer where I get this from, uh, it talks about his lineage, and it calls him Jacob. And then J-U-D-A-S, one of the three Judases, but not Judas Iscariot, of course. Uh, and then Judah, J-U-D-A-H, so of the, uh, of the lineage of... Jesus's family here on this earth. This is who this man is. But notice he doesn't say that. James in his epistle didn't say that. And Jude here in his epistle doesn't say that either. Yours says slave, bond servant. Mine says servant. This is who this is their humility according to who this man truly is. True. The Son of God. Okay? Right. Yeah. Same mama, different daddy. Different daddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure enough. But and then that then the difference between that word also, the uh, when we get when we'll get to it. In 6 and 13, uh, we'll be talking about a certain group of angels, which is a rather fascinating part this mentions. And then um, 13, uh, reserve. That's the keeping the eye. The Lord, the Lord is keeping his holy eye upon these. It's like a fortress, a prison hold, detained, withheld, in custody. So notice the difference between preserved and reserve. I, I thought that was fascinating the way it was written that way. Mm -hmm. It's written that way for a reason. Every every word is. So there is a wonderful introduction. He is saying who he is, and then called in Jesus Christ. And yours, I love the way yours your two said, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. It's just lavished upon you more and more and more. Um, go go over in your Old Testament bill right quick. Well, let's let's get the background. Go to Exodus 33, 19. <clears throat> Exodus 33, 19. And then, and when you read that, also uh, go to Romans 9, 15. And while you do that, let me say 33, what? 33, 19. Exodus 33, 19. 
The Lord replied, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will call out my name, Yahweh, before you, for I will show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. But you may not look directly at my face, for no one may see me and live. Okay. Now, that was 19 and 20. Yeah. Now roll over. He always has to do one extra, which gets us way off. I don't like this app because it's a Yankee, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Romans 9.15. Romans 9.15. Yeah, and remember what you just said. Who's playing with the lights, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> I will. Uh, here, use this little thing. Your jar? Yeah. No, uh, the little little book there. That's what I held it. Uh, Romans nine fifteen. I'll put this in. Yeah, here. put that in there. Okay. Uh, and the reason I did is I just wanted more people here first. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe close the door on the way out. So you know. I will. Okay. And leave the lights on. <laughs> well, I was turning all of them on. Yeah, it's hard. To, they need to have labels. I know. Okay, Romans nine fifteen. Yes, For God said to Moses, "I will show mercy to anyone I choose." And I will show compassion to anyone I choose. See what it, word for word. Word for word. Yeah. Okay. Now we're talking about old, old Exodus, old New Testament. Yeah, yeah. See, we're way, way, way back, back over there. And people, oh, yeah, like uh, you know, you say, oh, that's Old Testament. No. When these folks, and that's in Romans, that would be Paul writing it. Mm-hmm. Paul knew the word. When he puts it in his epistle, that's that's prevalent and that's up to date for the church at that time. Mm-hmm. And for us today. So we have to realize, folks, this group of people that Jude, and while I'm staying on the first four verses here, we need to understand who he is writing this to because we just got through with a little, certain little lesson about God's love. Mm-hmm. Who does it say he loves here? Those who he chooses. Thank you very much. Isn't that what your Bible says? Yes, sir. That's what, the, that's what the Bible <coughs> says. It says, preserve. I, I have some, certain ones called out. These are certain ones called out. Uh, verse 1. Preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. If you want to go back, that, that mercy that we get, the first one in, in verse 2 there, the mercy that he has on us. And you notice, uh, I love the words mercy and grace. Hear this, folks, the ones out there listening. You, you understand what I'm, where I'm going with this. The Lord has shown his mercy on me by not doing to me and not giving to me what I deserve. I deserve punishment. I deserve his judgment. I deserve to stand before his wrathful look, gaze, fiery eyes, and hear him say, you nasty, you're a sinner, you're in your natural flesh, get away from me, you can't, you can't be in my presence. Notice the rest of that in Exodus. He told Moses, turn around, you can't look on my face, I'm, I'm God, you can't look at me, dude. You're, you're human, you can't look mm-hmm. on me. Turn around and I'll, I'll just let you see the brightness of my glory go by you. Mm-hmm. Okay? He had mercy on him. Yeah. He also, he also told him to take his uh, sandals off and kneel down because it was holy ground. Holy ground, absolutely. Even in that, if you think about it, let's get down greedy, greedier in that. If you think about it, he was having mercy on Moses at that time mm-hmm. by telling him previously to turn around and hide in the cleft of the rock because if you don't, you're, gonna be, you're just going to go into a billion pieces. You can't stand before holy God in your condition. Right. You just can't. So there, in, in, when he says that in Romans, that word mercy, he doesn't, he doesn't do what we deserve. His grace is he does do what we don't deserve. He has shed his grace on me. He has shed his grace on you. He's called you out, Bill. He has saved our soul, my soul. I can say it myself. Saved my soul, too. We can witness for ourselves. And shed his marvelous, amazing grace on us in the fact that undeserving, unmerited, he gave us unmerited favor in that. So this writer, this Jude that is writing to these people is going, remember, folks, remember the mercy that he has had on you. And he has to show you his mercy and his grace before you have the peace of God in your life. You can't just 
be peaceful no. in this world no. without having God's grace on your life. Because you always got that little yin, 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 in your ear. In your ear and in your heart. Right. You're not, you're, you're, you're just in the world, you're natural, and there is no peace. Why do you think the world is moving so quickly and so erratically like it is today and zipping back and forth and people multitasking and never really getting anything done is because there is no peace. The Lord, over and over in his word in, in the Psalms, tells us, peace be still. Be quiet. Hush just a minute. Peace be with you. Uh, know that I am God. J just, t just take a break. My daddy used to say that all the time. Take a break. Just take a break. Well, I, I kind of look at it as step back and take a breath and look what's around you. Absolutely. Right. That's what you're supposed to do. Reevaluate what's happening. We can have peace in our lives. This is where that comes from. Why am I spending so much time? Folks, we've got to get that down. Believers, we've got to get that down. These introductions in these epistles... If you just want to scam over them and go, oh yeah, this is Paul, this is James, this is Peter, whatever it is. Now, if you want to read, I'll tell you what, read Second Peter along with Jude. There's three little chapters, I believe it is, in Second Peter. Same thing. Peter talks, Peter starts, and Peter gets pretty bold. Bold with his <laughs> sayings. Yeah. Uh, and with his actions, and, too. And with his actions about what is going on at the time. Just a few pages back, Second Peter talks about, well, hold on just a minute. There's some nasty folks coming in, and they're trying to slither in. I love the way it says it, worm their way in into the church. But wait, we know the truth. We have God's mercy on our lives. God has shed his grace on our lives. We have been called out by God the Father into Jesus the Christ. We're called. He has shed his light on us. Look, hold on a minute. Now then, what are we going to do? We're going to stand up. We're going to poke our chest out. We're going to put on the whole armor of God, and we're going to lean into that fight. Stand contend, mm -hmm. defend the faith. Uh, what you're saying is not right. You're going to have to get out. Okay? That would cut it. Wouldn't that shut down about 90% of the evangelists on TV nowadays? That's probably a... That's, that's, a, that's a conservative figure <laughs> there, yeah. Let's say about 95, 98% of them, yeah. yeah. Most of them people are just there, off of their own selves. There, there are a few out there that actually stand in the Word of God. And yeah, I, and I, yeah, I agree. That. I agree. Yeah. Uh, if you turn to, to uh, Billy D one two three, you can find some good teachings. That's right. That's right. But notice the, the right right off he, the wonderful opening there one two and three verses one two and three, and that preserved we're preserved so so this this can affect us earthly, but it's not going to pull us out of God's grasp. So that's a good thing because we're preserved. But then four, he goes right into, well, here's the problem. I, I, you know, I sat down and write this letter. I had this, oh, I was la, 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 la. I got me my little script, my little uh, paper here, my little, my little parchment. And, and I'm going to sit down and write these people here. And, oh, I'm so thankful for these Jewish believers. They believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. What's that? Change it to from salvation to what? You mean there's other people in the script? Okay, well, I sure will. This, that's what happened. Now, I wasn't there. That's just Sammy's version of it. But that's what we get out of it. Yeah, the right. jump from verse three to verse four. Okay, right, this is where right, we get that. Right. For certain, for there are certain men that's crept in unawares, who were before, uh, uh, before of old. Okay, well now where do we get that? Well, turn back to uh, Paul. I believe wrote a little bit about that. Back over in Acts, didn't he? Go to Acts chapter twenty, and start in twenty nine. I believe that's where that is. Um, Acts that? twenty twenty nine. Yeah. Because it says, certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. It's already been established that these are going to happen. And this is not a surprise to, 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 to the God of heaven, you understand? They're ungodly men, unholy men, turning the grace of our God. In fact, what they're saying, Bill, they're saying exactly the opposite of what God's word says, which shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And Paul's very bold answer to that, which is obvious. God forbid. No, we can't. Well, what is what is Paul right there to the, in Acts? In Acts 21, verse 29. Says, Acts 20. Correction. Right. Acts 20. 21 down here. Acts 20, 29 says, I know that false teachers like very, are like vicious wolves will come in among you after I leave, not sparing the flock. Uh, oh, re read the next one here. Okay. Even some men... From your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. Watch out. Remember, 
the three years I was with you, my constant watch and care over you, right, over you night and day, and my many tears for you. He cried. There's another emotion there. He cried. This Paul man, Paul, little, the apostle of, drawn out by God unto the Lord Jesus Christ, cried day and night. He was talking, that, that, that is talking about Ephesus, the church of Ephesus. Mm -hmm. God, protect these people. Bless them. Put, put, a, put, put your hands around them. There are people out there. Notice that encompasses everybody. Those verses, 29, 30, and 31. Not only talks about the world and the hatred of the world coming in. It talks about who? From your own flock. From people that are, uh, that are with you. But John, we just got through reading in 1st, 2nd, 3rd. John and First John, the, the first the, the five chapters in First John, they went away from us. They went away from what we were, who we were and who we were teaching. Why? Because they were not of us. They were among us at one time, but they went out and started teaching heresies. We don't want to be associated with that person anymore. We don't want to be associated with them. You know, you talked about in in Romans where in Romans chapter eleven it says that we're grafted in. Would this be the same thing in Acts 20, 32, when he says, And now I entrust you to God and the message of his grace that it is able to build you up and give you an inheritance mm -hmm. with all of these, of all of those he has set apart for himself. Would you consider that part of grafting in? It is on the same line, yes. He's talking specifically about the people there in Acts. And if you remember, this Jude is going to hit on what we just read in four in right. Jude, mm -hmm. the the Apostles' Creed, which is the Book of Acts. Oh. So he's what he's saying in Acts is to those believers, and you remember the story from Saul to Paul. He's just been transformed yeah. into a new. He's been brought out of the darkness into the light. Big time. And so he's talking about those that are now the converts, the ones that are going from the world, from paganism to not anything at all, to Gnostics, to whatever into believing the way. And Acts is called the way, this way. There's a new king in town. <laughs> I like so that. he's saying, yes, now you have an, an, an e eternal inheritance. That's part of that. Well, that e eternal inheritance, that is us being grafted into. Later on, he's gonna, a little while later, he's going to write Romans. He's got, to do, he's got to do a little journey here first. After so you have, you're, you're grafted in, and once you're grafted in, you get the inheritance. Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, remember, we touched on Esau not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, I loved Esau. I hated. Remember, Esau mm -hmm. filled his gut, but not his heart. Well, yeah. Esau, when he did that, and we have to remember this. Thank you for asking these questions. Why, why it says inheritance there is because there was not only the blessing that Esau walked away from, the he he turned the inheritance down. Yeah. What was coming after the blessing? Mm -hmm. The immediate blessing that God had for him being what? The firstborn. He was the firstborn. That was a big thing back in, uh, back in the old days, as we call right, it. Right, right. That was a big thing. He was the firstborn son. Okay? I mean, this was like my right-hand man, literally. But he turned not only that down, he turned what came with it, that. which would be the inheritance. So Paul is talking about, be careful about your inheritance. And note there too in Acts, he's talking about that these people that have come from yeah, within. Yeah, yeah. Look at look at Second Peter two one. But there were false prophets also among the people, Israel, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Who's that? Church. Matthew seven fifteen. Beware. Acts twenty twenty nine. You just read it. Uh, who uh, privily, privately, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Denying what Jesus did, denying that he paid the price, denying that he... Now, folks, don't, don't, get, don't misinterpret what I just read there. I'm, I'm not doing the whole thing in Second Peter. Don't say, but if they're saved, yeah, I can. they're not saved. That says that he died upon the cross to save souls. But they're denying that he was God. They're denying what he did. They're denying what he did on the cross was for their salvation. So they're not saved. No. They're not saved. No. Don't, don't misinterpret that. Um, should we spend more time on that? We'll, we'll, we can. But don't misinterpret that, what I just read. Where are we, Jude? 
We're well, still we're okay. in Jude. I think we're about ready to start five. Five. Okay, so there's a wonderful introduction there, and then um, for some reason I have Second Corinthians eleven thirteen. Mark, there. Would you turn to Second Corinthians eleven thirteen, Bill, and read those couple of verses there? Maybe talk about the the condemnation of ungodly men. That's before ordained, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, wantonness. Oh, okay. That may be talking about this. Can you believe this? Can you believe, Bill, and class out there? There are people that actually think this in their minds and their hearts, and then they start teaching it to other people that, oh, well, we, we go to church. We're saved. We're okay. We sang a couple of good songs. We prayed. We heard the preacher pray. So let's just go and do and live like we want to. I actually, years ago, I actually went to school with some people like that, uh, one, one young man in particular. And we were not friends, we were buddies, we knew each other, we had some classes together. But he actually had the thought pattern, because he was, let me just say, he wasn't Baptist, I don't think he was actually Christian, <coughs> of you can live like you want to because of God's grace. Everything is okay because of God's grace. Well, that's what the devil wants you to teach. But we're told in the Word over and over again that if your life has been turned on, you now have, you now have a new nature. You now have, you're a new creature. That old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What does that mean? Well, I used to lie and cheat and cuss and whatever else or not do anything good, and now I've changed. That's what that means. Right. So uh, you've heard Bill <laughs> say, let me see if I get it right. When, you, when, when the Lord converts you, when your Lord pulls you out and saves you, you lose uh, half of your family and most of your friends. <laughs> is that, is that, was that a little saying, something like that? Yeah, like that? I, I, I haven't that, heard that before, but it's true. Or, or vice true. versa. Uh, uh, most of Either way, you're losing friend, something. Yeah, you're losing something. Well, uh, but why? Because people are going to go, hey, uh, it's Friday night. Let's go get drunk. Hey, it's Friday night. Let's go get a couple of hookers. Hey, it's, you know, whatever. Well, you know, you may lose friends and family, but you're always going to gain, too. But look at the family you get to be put into. Amen. The family of God. That's right. Where did I say Second Corinthians? Second Corinthians, I think, 10, 13. Second uh, Corinthians 11, 13. Well, 11, 13? Okay. 13 through 15. Okay, 13 says, These people are false apostles they are deceitful workers correction <laughs> deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ What's the next one say? but I am not surprised even Satan disguises himself as an angel of the light <laughs> mm -hmm. amen to mm -hmm. that. So, that so who are they following? They're following Satan. their daddy. Yeah. Who's your daddy? They're following their daddy. Yeah. That's what. That, that's what. It's clear. That's clear as crystal. So how can you tell, Bill? How can you tell? Here is here. We ran over that in depth in First John and in Second John, third of them, but especially First John. You believe that Jesus the Christ came in the flesh. Yes. He was born of a virgin. Yes. He lived a perfect, sinless life. Yes. He died on the cross to fulfill God's redemptive plan for sinful mankind. Yes. He arose from the grave and came out bodily. Yes. He ascended unto his Father and is sitting at his right hand. Yes. He is interceding for those who would call upon his name today in faith. Yes. And he is coming back. Yes, yes, and amen. That, that's a believer. Now, now, also, you do your father. Do you do his father's will on this earth? Of course, right. that goes along right. with that. But those are the things in the doctrine that you have to believe. Okay, well, what did it just say in multiple versions here, multiple chapters and verses here? Well, some of these folks are coming in and going, uh, no, no, y'all have that wrong. Uh, you you distorted it through the years. Some of y'all are kind of old now. He he didn't really die on the cross. Or. He, he might have died, but he died because he had committed sin and, and Rome caught him doing that. Or, what, okay, they're distorting the truth. Yeah. They're not, they're not saying and giving full credit to why Christ Jesus died on the cross, the Son of God. He came to be the Son of God, he died on the cross. They're, they're, they're distorting that now. They're coming in. Um, well, here's the thing. Some people will start to believe that. In these churches, they start to believe that. Well, you tell a lie enough that people will believe it. 
And you'll believe it. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, that's the, that's the biggest thing. In, right. You have the you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. You're a child of God. You can't get out. You're at the step of approval. Well, I, I would say you're more engulfed by the Holy Spirit. Oh, engulfed. I like that. Because, just, I mean, he takes over everything. Just swallowed up by yeah. it. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. And you know what that means to be filled by, to be filled with the Holy Spirit? You're not ashamed and you're not afraid to speak the truth of this Bible. Amen. That's being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 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 We, we've sang with groups before, and I won't go into that. Uh, in different states, different cities, whatever else, and, the, and they, they tried to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And they, they started jumping all around on the stages and their eyes rolled in the back of their head and they flopped around and went into convulsions and dropped their microphone and then went boom, you know, through the sound system and they flopped on the floor like a dead fish and, and part of the crowd was, oh, 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 Holy Spirit, you know, stuff like that. And I'm sitting back there waiting for us to go on going. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet, you know. Uh, no, I was, amen to that, yeah. I, I, I agree with what you're saying because... That's nice not being filled with the Holy Spirit. No, that, that's that's a no. show. That, that, it, it, yeah, it's just uh, an act. It's, it's an act. A, yeah. The Holy Spirit, you yeah, you can see it in a people. You can see <clears throat> it in a person. I can see it in you. I can feel him in you. From Does here. it ooze? Am I oozing? A little bit. Okay, <laughs> you ooze it, but you know what I'm trying to say. Gotcha. I, I I by seeing your actions, mm -hmm. your 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 the way you talk and and it's different things with the Bible and all this good stuff. It tells me that you're a man of God. Oh. You know, and when I changed, when I was saved, and I go to work mm -hmm. after I had been saved, and I had people coming up to me and say, "Who are you? Yeah, who yeah. are you? What happened to you?" I got saved, man. Mm -hmm. You have sure changed, Bill. Mm -hmm. I surely have. I surely have. See, there, there's a visible difference in your attitude, your aptitude, your demeanor, uh, uh, your whole lifestyle. Right, and, and it's so hard to convince people of mm -hmm. that. You know? Well, you can. You can. You can live your Christianity, but True. God has to turn their light on. Right. Yeah. Right. But but you 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 need to be a vessel to try to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You know. That's what I look at. That's what, what we that's never. What I never talked to people uh, like that. A man is known by his doings. That's what right. the Bible says. Oh my mom! I don't know how many times my mom told me that. She she said that verse when I was a little feller growing up for years. A man is known by his doings. Well, I get on the phone and talk to. Telemarketers or people are calling. I'm checking on something, and you can tell over the phone. Are you? Mm -hmm. You sound like you're a Christian. Are you a Christian? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Yeah. Just the voice coming over the phone oh, to absolutely. you. Absolutely. Well, that's the whole power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. They could be in Pennsylvania or yeah. uh, India, and and uh, it's still the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Absolutely. And you can witness. All righty. Well, that's thirty minutes on the introduction. Let's get to the uh, forty-two. <laughs> Let's get to the. Uh, uh, to the uh, actual writing of this here letter. Now then, this the, my little subtitle is The Doom of False Teachers. So we've read Paul's uh, warning already back over in Acts. Yeah. So that would have been uh, 25, 30 years earlier. We've read Peter's uh, warning and, and telling these people about it already saying, hey, there are going to be false teachers. They're, they're going to be of you. There's some of them are going to be in amongst you in your crowd. Beware of them. A year or two earlier when he wrote this, uh, when Peter did. So here Jude is now right before uh, these um, Messianic Jewish Christian believing audience and he's going I will therefore put you in remembrance though ye once knew this. Now this lets us know he's really talking to the Jewish people. Why? Because he's fixing to list who Israel is. How that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Well, notice, notice the, uh, you read your, read, read five. So I want to remind you, though you already know these things, that Jesus first rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt, but later he destroyed those who did not remain faithful. Now, it was a big, big con controversy. He loved those one, people, right? Yeah, he, absolutely. They were his people, but what happened? They continually rebelled against right. the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it didn't happen overnight. No. He didn't just get mad. He didn't just get mad and have emotions and sensitivities and just destroy them. Oh, my, my kids are bad. Bam. No, this happened year after year after year mm -hmm. after year. In that generation, he said, "You know what? You, you don't need, you don't deserve to go into the land." You know, I, I promise you over and over again. Remember the spies that went in? There was 12 spies that went in. 
Mm-hmm. Thank God for Joshua and Caleb. But the other ten, the 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 the, the, the ten spies that went in led that generation, all of those people that had seen God. And why I'm saying this is because this is what Jude is reminding these people. They're his people. Mm-hmm. You know why he says you put you in remembrance? Who are you? Israel. You Jewish people today, you know about your ancestors. They were hard hearted, they were hard headed. They saw God's presence. At night he was a pillar of fire. He led them. In the daytime he was a cloud. They they heard him. They they saw Moses' face all shining when he came down from Mount Sinai. They these are the ones that had the uh, uh, the Ten Commandments. First of all, halfway down the mountain they were written by God's finger. Then he had to be threw them down. And what the hell are you people doing? You know. And so he goes back up and and, Mo, and he commands Moses, okay, you know, then you uh, chisel them out with a chisel. <laughs> I wonder how long that took. You know. <laughs> so they come back now. They the, these are the people that witnessed. They witnessed God's presence. Yeah. So Jude is reminding them, look. This is what happens, and God is a perfect record keeper. This is what happens to rebellious people. This is what happens to faithless people. This is what happens when you know the truth, and then you stray from it. The, the apostasy, this is what this is talking about. From now on, we're going to be talking about three groups here in, the, in these immediate verses, three groups. We're going to have Israel. We're going to have a group of angels. And then we're going to have uh, Satan himself. Okay, uh, Filthy dreamers that come in. So, uh, and afterward, that he let them out of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Okay? No faith. Jesus even asked over in Luke 18, 8, he asks the question, and it's a, I believe the, the word is rhetorical, isn't that the word rhetorical? Because you know what the answer is going to be, it's going to be negative. When the Son of Man returns, am I going to find faith on the earth? And the answer, Bill, is no. If you want to turn to it, it's, it's Luke 18, 8. He asked the question in, in that whole context there. He's going over and over again who he is, what he's done, who sent him, why he's here, and then what he's facing. He says, when I return, and I'm going to, I've got to get a few things done here on this earth. I've got to go to the cross and die. But when I come back, is there going to be any faith on this? Are people going to be looking to me? Are people going to be hollering out to the Lord God of heaven going, please, Jesus, save my soul? And the answer is no. Now Luke 18, 8 says, I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. With an exclamation point after that. Justice, not not love, but justice. justice. Yes. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? Well, that's a good question. And the answer is... I don't know. That goose egg. (laughs) (laughs) So... Okay. Mm. Okay. So here we go. Uh, that's the that's the first example. Seems like we're just dragging this, but it's good stuff. It is good stuff. It's good stuff. Okay. Jude. I don't know if if, if y'all studied Jude or not. But it's uh, one little. Uh, I had never read the. I had never read Jude, but I am sure learning a lot right now. Jude. Uh, yeah. You mentioned Amos uh, a week before last week. Yeah, we haven't. I haven't read Amos, Amos yet either. So. Uh, it's all God's word. Same Amen. God. Yeah. And it's all intertwined, too. Intertwined, absolutely. Okay, so that's the first one there. Now, notice the next one, verse 6. Uh, read your verse 6. This is, this is a fascinating history, yet up-to-date, yet they're not yet. Who, where are they? Who, what are they? Read, read verse 6. Verse 6 says, And I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of authority, God gave them, but left the place where they belong. God has kept them securely chained in prisons of darkness, waiting for the great day of judgment. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Obviously, there's a free will there. Yes. Obviously, there is a will that these, that these angelic beings had a choice. Now, these apparently I want to put into the really, really, really bad category. Uh, these are the ones that were in God's presence. It says angels there. Right. And the angels which kept not their first estate. They they left the place. Notice the place, that the, the geography, the area there. They were in heaven, in God's presence. Right. But it also says, there, uh, 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 but left their own habitation. 
where they were allowed to and given the power and the authority to have the realm over, have, have the rule and authority over, left that. Mm -hmm. They turned from that. He hath, now here's the, here's the word, not preserved, but reserved. Mm -hmm. Reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. These Folks, it clearly says right there, they rebelled against God face to face. Now, notice it says darkness there. Mm -hmm. What is God's presence? It's complete light. light. It's complete, penetrating, bright, prevalent lightness, brightness, everything else. Okay, and we're even told in heaven we won't need the S U N or the M O O N or the stars because why? Christ Jesus is light. So here they are. Notice it says they are kept. They are reserved. And what I read a while ago, the reserved is keeping the iPhone. God is keeping his iPhone. It's a fortress, a prison hold, detained, withheld, in custody, in darkness. Prisons of darkness. So they have left. They chose to rebel against the God of heaven. So he says, you know what? You have been in my presence, in, in my domain, Mm -hmm. And I created you. You were created beings. And I gave you a will. Apparently so. I, I, I can't get anything else. That, that, that's what I wrote on mine. And well, they had to have made a choice. Uh, chose to rebel against right. God's authority. That's what I wrote. Yeah. Created heavenly beings in the presence of God. Created obviously with a free will. Angels do not reproduce as humans do, so not born with a sinful nature. They are, they, these angels here were not born into a sinful nature, that they had to be changed out of it. They chose themselves. Right. So here these choose to rebel. Maybe different group mentioned here, uh, those who are fallen angels and now called demons that Satan uses, I think they are. I think, I think what we have here today, which is a bit overrated by Hollywood, but there is definitely Samuel the first prophet. First and Second Samuel talks about it. Don't conjure up these because they're uh, it's real Ouija boards and praying to Satan and stuff like that. He's got minions out there. Yes, I think these are different. I think these are a special group of rebellious angels that were in God's presence and they went me to Him. Okay. Now we know that a third of the angelic host fell with Satan. Right. I am not, my, my wallet is not big enough to, dis, to tell you with complete authority today. I would have to read more and study more about it, pray more about it. But I think this is a special group of really bad, rebellious angels that were in God's presence. Why? Because it says darkness there. It says they're kept in darkness. What is the opposite of total brightness of God's presence? Total darkness. Bingo. And they're kept in chains until that day. Now, meaning that they're, apparently they're still angelic beings and they, they're, they're stronger than mankind, but they're not stronger than God. Because so he created them. If I understand what you're saying, that these particular group of demon angels, if you want to call them that, mm -hmm. are chained right now. They're right now, absolutely. They're chained since, the, since their fall. Since their fall. Absolutely. But Satan was able to go and do his thing. Satan has his minions. Satan right. has a definite domain and a definite dominion of Angel. He's the Lord of the Flies. Right. Uh, the Gospels calls him that. Uh, Beelzebub. Yeah. And uh, that's in one of my songs, by the way. And also, the the minion that he has are the ones that are prevalent today in the world. In the world today. That possess people. Right, his demons. When, when, they're open, when a person opens up themselves, not a Christian, not a believer, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, a child of God cannot be possessed by a demon. But the world can, the unsaved can, and we see that, 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 that they are. I, I, think, I think Charles Manson was possessed. I do too. Um, I think a lot of them people. I think Adolf Hitler was possessed. I, I think do too. Joseph Stalin was possessed. I think... Uh, 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 the clown in China. I, 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 absolutely, and one North Korea. I think they are possessed, or have a... A strong leadership of, if they're not completely indwelt, I think they have a strong leadership they listen to. Mm -hmm. uh, other people, a lot of people in churches, unfortunately, are possessed. Biden. Biden. Harris. 
it's his video he exactly what he wants to. That's an interesting uh, concept that you yeah. that, uh, that is brought out in regards to these being chained in darkness. I yeah. I hadn't heard of that. The fallen angels and now called demons that Satan uses and are prevalent at uh, at Judas at Jude's writing here and today in our own age and these that. Um, the rebellion, I wish I wrote better, uh, was so great that God put them in everlasting chains and reserved under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Note, and then I noticed, and I noted the difference there between preserved us and reserved them. Well, you know, it's pretty interesting what you're saying. These, these will, these angelica angels will be chained in darkness until. Judgment Day. Absolutely. And then, the last day then they'll be judged, but they're not going to be released. No. Imagine that. Open, free will, presence of God, fleeting about, strong, mighty angels, and then they either they looked at Lucifer and saw part of a, part of his beauty, or they just said, you know what? I I, uh, uh, I think I think we can we can be uh, a strong and mighty angelic host on our own what anyway they, this is a special group here this is a different group mm. somebody that if, if you never if y'all know better uh we can go back to um to the tower of babel okay yeah uh, we yeah. can go back to uh the the right during the fall of uh, genesis in between two and three three and four we can go back into that area there y'all fill me in on something like that but i, I can just teach a certain amount that is, uh, so wow. the, I think this is bad. why. But there's one verse there, one verse in Jude, verse six talks about this, and he listed. Mm -hmm. Look where he's listed between the whole nation of Israel, then these angelic beings. That's number mm -hmm. two mm -hmm. the, the, of the apostates. Now watch this, verse three, uh, verse seven says, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them. Notice that too. Mm -hmm. North area, in like manner. Um, given themselves over, Bill, is that another choice? Oh, yeah. It says given themselves over. Chose yeah, they to. They chose to, yeah. To fornication and going after strange flesh and set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Remember those hailstones that came down? Mm -hmm. Those 100 pound hailstones that were on fire? That, that, yep. uh, that, that old lot was warned, get out, get out, get, get out, out, when you get can. out. Okay? Yeah, but you, you did. That's interesting. Notice the three there, folks. Look, look in your Bible. If you've never noticed that before, that's why we go over these slowly. Sammy's slow studies. <laughs> is to draw out what that actually says. There are three different entities there. Now the next is going to be talking about three individuals. So you've got six in all here that are perfect examples, <laughs> imperfect examples, yeah. of apostasy, of turning away, departing. Okay? Th these angels departed. Israel departed. Sodom and Gomorrah were old, old cities. They didn't have to choose to go after, hey, we're men, and them some good-looking men. We're going to start laying down with them like we do our wife. Mm. They didn't have to. They chose to do that. Same today. Okay? Yep. Um, so you got Israel, this angel group, and then these, uh, mm. man, notice that. Sodom and Gomorrah group. Uh, yeah, but look, look at that. Afterwards, look at the last line of each of those five. The Afterward, five. destroyed them that believe not. Six, unto the judgment of the great day, held in darkness. Mm -hmm. Verse seven, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Man, by fire and serve as a warning of the eternal life of God's judgment. Look what happens when when you when you turn away, when you depart. Now remember, departure. It ain't going to be a pretty ending. It's not going to be pretty. <laughs> but it'll be just. You just read about it. Just. Yep. Yep. So let's stop right there because uh, that gets the first three entities. Then we're going to start into into an interesting little story here that I found fascinating uh, about about Michael and Satan. Ooh. Michael the Archangel and Satan over debating. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing a, a arm wrestling. Arm uh, wrestling. We'll, yeah. we're, we'll see who wins. We'll see, we'll see what they're wrestling over. Mm -hmm. They're actually wrestling over something. Yeah. Someone actually. Uh, so and that'll be in Jude. We'll do that. Yeah, next right there. All right. right there, I'm going to finish reading Jude yeah. tonight. And we'll have some references too. Uh, it's fascinating. You want to go back over to? Uh, well, we'll get there. But yeah, that's fascinating. Okay. Anyway, that's not even 
That's, that's not even notes. putting that's a dent in the notes, is it? Yeah, they didn't even finish. But anyway, that's uh, that's starting Jude. So uh, our next study is going to be in Luke, Luke chapter twelve. So if you, this will come out on Wednesday the eleventh, uh, uh, and the one today will come out this evening, hopefully sometime or tomorrow morning, uh, the eighth, eighth or ninth. Anyway, all right. Thank you very much. You got any more comments? No. Bye-bye.